Welcome back from that. Like we said earlier, we have an interview where we'll be discussing the warming. The rainy seasons are here. And um, children, above all, are most susceptible to warm problems. How often should one be warm? What is the biggest challenge when you do not? That's what we're discussing. And my guest this morning in the studio is Abubakar Abba, Data manage, Manager and Monitoring and Evaluation Officer of the FCT Public Health Department of the Neglected Tropical Disease Unit. Thank you so much for being part of the program. Welcome. Thank you, Ma. Right. I know that uh, our parents, um, I don't know if you had the contemporary parenting, but they had very old traditional ways of dewarming at the time. Yeah. We have long grown from that. But has it been, is it still intermittent? Do these 21st century parents uh, know no. that they are supposed to do it intermittently? No, honestly, we are no longer using the oil process now. Of course. We are always upgrading ourselves. Of course. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm asking if there is enough awareness for the 21st century mother to um, know that um, honestly, it's very yeah, important. We have done a lot of awareness in the school, communities, and other places, marketplaces, mugs, churches. Everywhere we used to go for the uh, uh, sensitization against uh, deworming. Okay. Yeah. So what is the biggest risk? Should a, a child not be dewormed for, say, a year? Honestly, we have a serious, uh, the biggest challenge if a children is not dewormed, we have a lot of uh, risk factors, like uh, the children can become anemic, that is uh, loss of blood, and also, that student cannot concentrate in the school to learn. It can cause malnutrition, where the what he wants to achieve in the school, he cannot get it because he cannot concentrate for learning uh, status and so many things. Okay. Yeah. So, um, is there any side effects? I mean, how often? It's the rainy season right now. Why um, is... First of all, yeah. why is the rainy season a time where children are more susceptible to uh, warm issues? So normally, the frost site, the way that the children used to get in contact with the frost site is through uh, uh, running water and also through contamin contaminated water or contaminated soil. And during rainy season, you know, when they are going to school, they used to be flaying with rain, enter mm -hmm. river and so many things. So that's where they used to get uh, infected uh, during rainy season. Right. So your department, which is Neglected Tropical Diseases... Department of Public Health. Yes, P Department of Public Health. Yes. Uh, and then uh, you are in the unit of uh, Neglected uh, Tropical Diseases. Yeah. Uh, let's move a, a little away from uh, this this need for dewarming, this okay. uh, awareness for okay. dewarming. Yeah. What else would you say are neglected tropical diseases? Um, neglected tropical diseases uh, is the group of racetic and bacterial infection. They normally associated with uh, hunger, uh, for sanitation, where there is no sanitation, where there is no good source of water or inadequate uh, source of water condition. Right. So normally those people, they are at risk uh, communities where the neglected tropical disease is more, uh, is used to pound. Right. Yeah. So what does your, your unit constantly do, apart from just the advocacy? Is there um, something else you do? Yes, it's one of the mandates of the units from the national program down to the state level. Like we are engaging in yearly annual administration of the anti-helmet, that is the uh, dewarming tablet. Mm. So we are distributing the tab, uh, drugs in all the school in FCT and also the community. And most of the target group is uh, school age uh, children. And when I say school age children, it's not that the people, the people that are in the school, anybody that falls within the age range of the school, mm. whether he's a role or non a role, that's where we are targeting. So in the school setting, we are training teachers. After training the teachers, then we give them the uh, the woman tablet to administer to the pupils. Right. Also in Teachers the across the FCT. Across the FCT, both private and, and public, public schools. Yeah. Right. Then in the community, we have uh, people we call CDDs. That is community direct imp uh, distributors. We are also throwing this those one in community setting mm -hmm. to go and be doing the non-enroll 
school age uh, children. Children. Yeah. Right. Is there a, um, a side effect to it? Say, if I'm a parent yeah. and I have given my, I have dewormed my child maybe a week before you come into the schools, yeah. is it is there too much? Is there a side effect for taking um, too much? Point three, then there is no much uh, side effect because the warm varies. Maybe the one that you give to your child in the school is different from the one we are you giving. Do, right. And each of the drugs is taking care of one or other parasite. So like we have a lot of parasite, hookworm, roundworm, tapeworm, and so many things. So maybe the one we are taking is taking care of one parasite, right. then the one we are giving is also take care of the other parasite. So there is no any side effect. But at times the teachers used to ask, which of the one tablet do you uh, uh, take have in your house? Yeah, right. you have given by your parents. So right. if it's the same, so there's no need of uh, duplication. So what's the range, the age range that you've been targeting? Because uh, I, you're just, it's like you don't address adults at all. Yes, but yes, Before yes, we get yes. to adults, what's the range... Uh, the age range that you've been targeting for this uh, intervention? Okay, so our intervention, uh, we are targeting five years and above. So any children that fall from five years and above is within our range five of treatment. Five years and above to where? To hundreds. <laughs> so, but I've not been, I've not, nobody has come to my place of work to what, say you need you, to deworm. Yes, that's what I say. Drug, Normally right? we we do in community and school. Right. So maybe if you are in school setting, you have that privilege or in community, okay. they might go to your house and give you. So what we wanted to do now to be going to all these uh, ministries and agencies mm. and be training one of the staff, give him the drumming tablet and administer to the staff. Okay, so what happens to five and below, the children within five and below? Okay, so as I have said, me, I work with public health and normally our program is from five years and above. Okay. Then we have primary health care, which works, they are targeting okay. below five years. Okay. But hopefully, I think henceforth, we are trying to scale it off right. to capture all the edge growth. So what has the reception for it been? I mean, when you ap approach these people, yeah. uh, especially in the communities, some who might not be educated enough, yeah. how, how <laughs> have they received you? <laughs> Honestly, it's, uh, we have a lot of challenges in that aspect. Like in school settings, mm. they are already used to it and they do corporate. But in school, in community, we have a serious issue. I think there was a time that my staff went to community to administer drugs. They have to run for their life. Wow. Because they are they thinking that they are coming to kill their children. They have some negative perception that they are bringing something that will uh, stop us from getting bad or so many negative perception. You understand? About, about it. So, so before, uh, prior to any treatment or any dwelling, we have to go and see the community leaders, uh, uh, elders in the community, sensitize them, let them know what we are doing, what the, the benefit of dwelling. Otherwise, honestly, a lot of challenge. They won't even allow you to access their community. Okay. So, but those ones who will not let you access their communities, how have they been dewarming? Is this the old traditional ways that you think they've been doing it, or they are not not even aware honestly, that they, they are should not, do it? They are not aware. They are thinking just something something else. And luckily enough, you see them coming to the hospital when the child now falls ill. Yes, I have a lot of uh, scenario where they came with some uh, uh, community members that they are urinating blood. And it's one of the effects of the woman mm. because the first side used to live in stomach for survival in, uh, for, uh, for survival and living in the uh, in, uh, and everything. Right. So at, in the course of the woman, if they are not doing themselves, at the end, the first side will start getting some wow. uh, problem in their stomach. They will start urinating blood or getting uh, defecating with blood. So it's one of the challenges we are facing. So, but now with the sensitization we are doing and so many things, they are getting they are improving. Yeah, 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 they are graduating. Right, yeah. but um, as a parent, yeah. often you just go to a pharmacy and ask for the over-the-counter drugs for for the warming. Usually, that's what you do. Yeah. But you just mentioned that there are different types of of the warming that one should do. Yes, yes. If a parent wants the whole nine yards of it, what should um, a, a parent ask for. Okay, as in the dewarming tablets. Yes, I mean, if for those who might not have been captured by your program yeah. and you want to do it for your child. Honestly, the issue, they are not getting, they don't used to get the right uh, drugs in the pharmacy. Our own is uh, donated uh, uh, medicine by WHO. 
Okay, the what? WHO now donated this yeah, one. Yeah, it's donated and free of charge. And it has everything. Everything, yeah. It, it, uh, what I mean is it targets or attacks all the kinds of... Most of, of the parasites, yes. Right. But the one they are taking in the pharmacy, maybe it will just target like uh, one parasite or two parasites. So they are not going to get rid of that uh, parasite. Mm. You understand? Well, the one we are giving, if they took that one, honestly, they can get better and almost get rid of the parasites. So can, can an FCT resident just walk into the FCT public health facility or even the public health department to say, yeah. you know what, I want for As my children. Father, and it's free of charge. That what we have been advocating, mm. calling them to come and take it. It's free and safe. There is no any side effect. Well, growing up, my mother was a public health coordinator of a local government. So we were, we were, we were always the first to get these wow, vaccines. Wow, that's but, nice. But, but my question would be for... People, wouldn't you, wouldn't it, wouldn't, wouldn't it be easier to have people come uh, so that uh, for those who already know, who might not have been captured, frankly, nobody has knocked on my estate gate to say we want to give uh, vac um, the warming to yeah. children. Yeah. So where are your offices? And is it also with primary health care facilities around the FCTs? That's the issue we have. As I told you, we are using primary health care facility. And we are using school settings. And one yeah. of the challenges we have in the city is very difficult for them to accept the, the drugs. Right. At times, you can't even go and knock some houses that I'm yeah, exactly. coming with drugs, tablet. Please, what? just go away. Right. I want my children and everything. Even the school, you have challenge in some private school. Before they administer the drugs, they have to give a consent not to the parent. To yes, take I, either I, I, yes I or no. If you allow your children to take it, then you will take yes or no. With that, you see a lot of refusals. Wow. And the one they are taking is not up to standard of our own. Wow. Um, uh, Abu Bakr, you yeah. must be, I can understand the, the struggle in yeah. ensuring that these people, uh, you know, get the awareness that they need. But I must thank you for coming on the program. Thank you very much. And I much. hope those listening to us right now understand the very need uh, for deworming and how important it is to indeed deworm your child and deworm regularly. Yes. Yeah, for, for you, you didn't quite um, address one thing before I let you go. Okay, okay. How often should an adult deworm? How often should children deworm? Okay, as far as our own doing is concerned, we deworm just once in a year. For the adult? For the adult. Right. And even the children, but it depends on the and the mystery of the parasite in the in community, the environment, in the right. environment. Yeah, if right. you have a high parasite burden, you can try, uh, you can treat twice a year. You can take the domain tablets twice in a year. Okay. And yeah. how can I ascertain if I have the high parasite burden? Oh, you can just step into our office and take it. Okay. Thank you so much, Thank Abu Bakr Abad, data manager and monitoring and evaluation officer of the FCT Public Health Department of um, Department Neglected Tropical Disease Unit. I must thank you for what you thank do. Thank you very much. And I hope those listening to us have learned today that you need to deworm and deworm your children. It is uh, quite hazardous if you do not. But this is where we would round it up. Mm -hmm.